Hello, welcome to the Moon Scarab channel. My name is Ramon. On this video, I want to do a walkthrough of an Oracle deck I just received and that I'm really excited to show you. So you might know a very popular tarot deck that was released several years ago. And if I'm not mistaken, the first edition was released in 2018 and it's called the Marigold Tarot. It's a deck that's really special to me. This was the first skeleton themed deck that I got and it's published by 13th Press and illustrated by Amrit Brar. I love motifs of skulls and skeletons, not just on decks, but in general. It's a topic that I talked about on this channel several times. In fact, I have a video in which I show a selection of the skeleton themed decks in my collection and this one is among them. I think the association of bones with death evokes a psychological discomfort or fear, but truth of the matter, no one likes contemplating their immortality. But to me, skeletons and skulls are not just about death. To me, the imagery of skeletons goes beyond the idea of death. When I see a skeleton, I don't see race, gender, age, social status, time period, or any of those markers that makes us different. I see quality. I see the bare bones of who we all are deep inside this physical plane. No pun intended. So don't be freaked about skeletons. There's a very positive side to the imagery, and if you think about it, you walk with a skeleton in you all the time. The other reason I love this deck is because marigolds are my favorite flower. I love the symbology of the marigold uh, across different cultures like the ancient Egyptians, the ancient and modern Mesoamerica, the Greeks, in India, and other cultures. And this flower often symbolizes purity, divinity, positivity, brightness and the connection between life and death. The only thing I felt that was missing from this tarot deck was an oracle to pair it with. However, they just released one and I'm going to do a walkthrough of it on this video. It's called the Mirror Oracle. It's a companion to the Marigold Tarot. So it's a 50 card oracle deck and guidebook exploring reflections, visions, growth, and decay. And it's also illustrated by Amrit Brar. And I'm really excited about it. I also got from 13th Press this beautiful cloth. It's called the Celestial Altar Cloth. And it features the moon, the stars, rock doves, and their skeletons and floral patterns. It's metallic foil stamped on velvet. It's 22 inches by 22 inches, and it's available in different colors. So... I haven't watched any of the walkthroughs on this Oracle. As soon as I saw it on their website, I bought it and I was amazed with what I saw on their site. This video is not sponsored by the artists or 13th press. I actually purchased this deck, which was at an amazing price. It was like $35 and we're going to see it together for the first time. So let's open it. Beautiful. So it has their symbol here, just like with the Marigold Tarot. The only difference is this one's golden, this is silver. It's foil stamped. It's a magnetic closure. Wow. Beautiful. Let's see. Mm. Look at the quality. It's that iridescent uh, style. It's just exquisite. Oh my God. This is really great quality. Wow. It has a foil stamp cover too. <clears throat> so the cards come crattled in here. Beautiful. Soft velvety. See, as a, this holographic foil edging on both the back and the sides. So this is 310 GSM German Black Core linen finish plain cardstock. Quality is fantastic. You see, it seems that the back of the cards, they're all mirrors. So we're going to take a look on each one of the 50 cards. This is oh, quality is amazing and I'm not surprised. So we're going to look one by one each of the cards and talk a little bit more about it. 
So the first card is called the light. So it's that contrast between the sun and the moon. And it's interesting. I love that effect because the whole card is dark. And if you see it in person, this really pops up. It's not holographic like this one, but just the pure white has a very strong uh, contrast. So like with the cloth, it has the same design. So you have birds, you have what seems to be like a live bird and it's skeleton, floral patterns and same on the other side. So the first card is the light, the mirror on the back. So we're starting with a Zodiac. Aries, this is interesting, beautiful. So this is interesting. I don't know if it's on purpose, possibly it is, but Aries per astrology rules over the head and the brain region of the human body. So because it's focused on the physical part on the body, it makes sense that it's depicted this way. Interesting. Taurus. Taurus. I'm going to try to bring it closer. Interesting also. So Taurus, per astrology, two rules over the neck and shoulders of the human body. And this is interesting too. A lot of very popular singers are Taurus. I don't know if this is, um, I don't know. It, it reminds me kind of like opera in a way. But there's a lot of famous singers that are actually Taurus because Taurus is very keen with the vocal cords. So artists like Adele, Janet Jackson, Cher, Barbara Streisand, James Brown, Billy Joel, Stevie Wonders, they're all Taurus. Great singers. And um, yeah, that's one of the, the qualities of Taurus. They're very keen about singing, their vocal cords. And again, Taurus rules over the neck and shoulders on the human body. So yeah, it's very interesting depiction. Gemini, of course. Gemini, this is my zodiac sign. It reminds me, of course, of the lovers. And as we know, the cards of the lovers is associated with the zodiac sign of Gemini. And Gemini actually rules over arms, lungs, the nervous system and breath. So I think it's 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 on point with that depiction. Beautiful. Also, Gemini, you know, two two sides of 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 everything in the universe. Cancer. This is one of the most loving signs. It's it's a water sign too. So it makes sense that the skeleton is walking over water. You know, in astrology, Cancer are very, very caring and nurturing. And it's a sign that rules over the breast, chest and stomach of the human body. So it kind of makes sense that it's depicted this way. You see, it's carrying like a wreath of flower or some vegetation over the abdomen part. Walking over water, beautiful, beautiful. Leo, a very strong sign. I know a lot of, uh, especially women Leo. My mom's a Leo, strong woman. Madonna is a Leo, definitely. Leo rules over the heart and the upper part of the body, specifically the back part. So if you see, I don't know if you can notice, you have a heart. So this is definitely these zodiac signs that I, that we've seen so far are associated with different parts of the body. Beautiful card. Virgo. The Virgo sign rules over the abdomen and the digestive system of the human body. So, you know, Virgo people are ones that they love to feed others. You know, there are actually a lot of chefs that are Virgo, very popular ones. I think Rachel Ray is a Virgo. Mary Batali is a is a Virgo. Michael Simon is a Virgo. Um, Annie Burrell is a Virgo. I know it because I watch Food Network. <laughs> I love those shows. So I know the Virgos. They're great cooks and Virgo rules over the abdomen and they love to feed people. So and this seems to be like, you know, a skeleton picking up some wheat beautiful you see the attention of detail if you see it in person this looks silverish so you can tell the contrast between the the degree of white from the bones versus the grayness over here amazing libra libra 
is associated with balance. It's an air sign, so that might explain why the skeleton is walking over clouds. Beautiful. Scorpio. Scorpio. This gives me death card vibes. As we know, the death card, card number 13 from the Major Arcana, is death and is ruled by Scorpio. And we see the association here with the zodiac sign of Scorpio. But Scorpio is also a water sign. So we see it here on this pond, you know, with lotus symbolizing transformation, growth. Beautiful, beautiful. I love this depiction. It's very powerful. Sagittarius, of course. And as we know, Sagittarius, always we see it depicted or associated with the archer. You know, Sagittarius is a sign that people are who are Sagittarius, they're very highly independent, they're adventurers, and they're always full of imagination. That's one of the sides. The flip side is that they're also blunt and impatient. Beautiful card, amazing. Capricorn. So here we have a skeleton reading a scroll in what seems to be a hourglass. That's interesting. You know, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and it's very strongly connected with the concept of time. You know, it's a sign that it's associated with time and responsibility. They're very skilled in self-control and they make realistic plans and they're very capable of managing many people at once. Yeah, so it makes sense that they associated Capricorn with the hourglass. Nice. Beautiful. Aquarius, of course, we had the water bearer. You know, Aquarius actually is Latin for water bearer. And it's the 11th astrological sign of the zodiac. Originating, of course, in the constellation of Aquarius. You know, we associate Aquarius with the water bearer image, but Aquarius is actually an air sign. So you have the contrast of both things here going on. Water and air. Beautiful. I love that angle. It's beautifully done. Pisces. Pisces. When we see Pisces, usually it's depicted with two fish in opposite directions. And it represents the duality within the Piscean nature. It's a mutable water sign in the Zodiac. Beautiful. Next one, the prayer. So here it seems to be like the keywords, the different um, words of the oracle. So we have the Zodiac and it seems to be, yeah, different keywords. So we have the prayer. Beautiful. Love the, the detail of the garlands here. Valor. Offerings. Beautiful detail. Messengers. I love that contrast of the skeleton with the butterflies. Beautiful. Talismans. Huh. So if you see, we have the different elements going on here. So we have swords, cups, pentacles, and wands. And the eternity sign. So this is giving me the magician vibes, right? The detail here is fantastic. I mean, woof. All right. The gate. I love everything that has to do with gates. I don't know. Gates, portals. <clears throat> the path. I love that detail of the moon overhead. This reminds me of the hermit, right? But we don't talk about the path that the hermit takes, right? So this is, it gives the hermit vibes, but it's focused on the path. Beautiful. 
miasma. What's miasma? Miasma is um, it's like offensive odors or something that smells really bad. So we can see uh, what seems to be like bad smells or bad scents. Something that that's, I don't know, putrid or false smells. And it's interesting, there's focus on the sense of smelling. The eyes of the skulls are covered. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Harmony. Strife. I love how the backbone is it's like a stake, right? Almost like a weapon. Actually, now that I notice, if you see, I'm going to try to bring it closer, is actually a sword. Is actually a sword. So it's like the backbone of this personality, of this energy is combative, right? Strife. Like, I don't know, creating conflict or, or disagreement. Yeah, it's very powerful. Hmm. The disciple. Love the detail of the eye, the garlands, the borders. It's just beautiful. Phases, transformation, change. Tethers, things that keep us attached. Interesting. Pride. Of course, a peacock represents pride. Not that pride is a bad thing, but everything in balance. But beautiful. Look at the details of all those feathers. Amazing. The effigy. Very powerful. Armor. I love this beetle. Olive branches. I don't know. It's that contrast between olive branches and and the knife. The father. And it's a baby that's very much in the flesh. Beautiful. The mother. He's with the her child, we're assuming it's her child because we're talking about the mother. But you see also it's that contrast between the skeleton and the live flesh. It's almost like giving birth to ideas, I don't know, feelings. It could be talking about literally a mother. But yeah, it's a strong, I don't know, it's a powerful image. That association with water, giving birth in water. Lotus flowers, and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And as you see, the back is a mirror. The mirage. Love those flowers. What is? What are those peonies? Beautiful. You see, it's sort of like that f illusion, that fantasy that covers your eyes, and you see everything in a different under a different light or under the filter of, in this case, positivity or things that are, that won't last, things that can fall apart as we see petals. So it can go either way. And you know, mirages are usually optical illusions that creates an effect that's something that's not there, that's not real. Let's continue. Apotheosis. Apotheosis is actually the highest point of the development or something or sort of like the culmination or the climax. So as we see the skeleton here is holding something in its hand. And it's like after going through all this entanglement and, you know, you finally found what you were looking for. It's like the culmination, that climax of the moment that you found what you were searching for. It really depends on the context of the spread of different cars, but 
beautiful. Eternity. A floating tree. You see it's on clouds. And the roots are coming through the clouds. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> the plea. Look at that image. I have I have said this before. I love the imagery of hands, eyes, hamsas, and I don't know. It's a hand with an eye. Like this is my favorite card. Oh my god, this is exquisite. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. This is genius. Amazing. So powerful, right? Wow. It's almost like uh, the aces that we see in tarot, right? Coming from from clouds, coming through clouds. I don't know, from a different dimension through clouds. But this one with an eye, wow. It's just beautiful. Wow. I'm in shock. The soldier. The imagery of soldiers evokes discipline, self-sacrifice, you know, uh, the quest for higher good. Beautiful. I love the clothing. Look at the details in the clothing. The dancers. This reminds me of the Three of Cups, right? The, the detail in the images. Let me see if you can see it. It's just beautiful, though. The mourners. Three mourners. It's quite a contrast with this one, right? Like the dancers, the celebrating, they're happy, and the mourners. Also, like the source of light. Like they have here what seems to be. I don't know, like a maybe oil lamp of some type, and here it's the moon. Hmm. Sacrifice. Very powerful too. The thief. I heard so many stories of birds stealing things, right? This one's a genius. Like the piece of jewelry is taking away something precious by the bird. What is this? A J? I'm not sure. The veil. Oh my god. Look at that. The detail. You can see. Like the most minute details. It's very detailed, but it's not too much. It's not busy. Look how exquisite that card is. Visions. Love that eye. Love it. And it seems like it's reflecting. You see? It's a lot of little dots. It's just the details are amazing. Quality too. Blooms. Longing. The snare. Oh. Snare is a trap. Usually to trap birds, right? The snare. Nothing like the spider. Spiders represent wisdom too in a lot of cultures. So it's you know that that wisdom that expertise that complexity that goes building a spider web by this animal who has both positive and negative associations i don't know it's associated with fertility with motherhood but also with entrapment um it's it's very interesting the contrast of of meanings in the symbology of the spider i just love it look at that It's just gorgeous. The knife. Radiance. The 
song. Divinity. The moth transformation. Light like a moth to the flame. But it's that light that goes to heaven, that transformation. From fire to smoke to nothingness. Oh, and the mirror. The last card is actually a mirror. This is very interesting. Because, I don't know, I really like it saying, look at yourself. The answer is right in front of you. Beautiful. Wow, I'm just impressed with this deck. Now, how does it compare to, to the Marigold Tarot in terms of size? So if you have the Marigold Tarot, let's compare it here. How does it compare in size? It's actually the same size. So if you're making a spread and you have one next to the other, it's not gonna look odd um, in terms of size. It's actually the same style just different colors, so you should be able to tell easily apart which one is the tarot card, which one is the oracle. I love oracles. I use them as clarifiers with tarot cards, or I use them by themselves on spreads. Quality is exactly the same. Same type of quality is um, exactly the same quality. Oh my God, it's just, this is perfect. This is, I was waiting for something like this. Wow. And how does it compare to a regular tarot card? I should have started with that. It's exactly the same size. It's the size of a standard tarot card. The lovers, of course. Wow. So let's take a look at the booklet. So the booklet, the quality is amazing. This is perfectly bounded. Mirror Oracle, Mirror Bra. It's just fascinating. I mean, for the price, I'm actually impressed. So it has information of all the cards. Of course, I want to look for Gemini. It's my zodiac sign. Symbols, the twins, the arms, the clouds, associations, number three, Mercury, air, duality, the lovers, and the devil. Oh, yeah, of course, the devil. The devil always seemed to me like the opposite of the lovers. The third sign of the zodiac, Gemini, is a mutable air sign ruled by the planet Mercury. It is associated with communication, duality, thought, and the pursuit of knowledge. Gemini rules the arms, hands, and nervous system. Interesting what I what I was mentioning. It seeks out it seeks to reach out, touch, and understand the world in its own merits through its own experiences and means. Gemini is associated with the lovers and the devil in tarot, both which feature the same two figures intertwined, whether through devotion or vice. Hmm. Gemini explores the dichotomies in thought, curiosity, and the ability to parse extreme highs and lows. It can also be associated with duplicity, deceit, and masking one's true emotions or attentions. Hmm. Really interesting. Let's pick a random one. Let's look for one that's, let's see, the thief. Let's see. Symbols. The blue jay earring association number 39 12 and 3 misunderstanding the hermit while birds are associated with stealing shiny valuable objects in folklore these beliefs are largely unsubstained in reality or misunderstood the thief invites us to investigate our prejudices misunderstandings miscommunications and our interactions with myth how a story can become larger than reality itself and proliferate so wildly that none question it. In tarot, it is associated with the hermit, an oft misunderstood card that asks us to examine our relationship with introversion, reclusion, and solitary thought. This card can suggest miscommunication, breakdowns in hierarchy and illusions. It can also symbolize loss, deception, and an absence of control. This is really interesting. And I'm actually very happy that they included the handbook, the, 
Let's see. The Marigold Tarot, at least this edition that I got, did not include a handbook. Although for Tarot, you really don't need it. I mean, but the newest edition, which I think is the fourth edition, does include now the handbook. Anyways, um, I'm really impressed with this uh, with this new Oracle. If you have this deck, you should definitely get this one too because it's the perfect companion. In terms of size, quality, it's exactly the same thing. Um, and it'll be a great complement to one to the other or just by itself. I mean, beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Please leave comments below of what you think about this deck. And if you're interested in getting it, I'm going to link below the Etsy store of 13th Press and Amrit Brar. So you can get it directly from there. It comes from Canada. I order it and I got it like in five days here in the East Coast of the United States. The price is amazing. And even if you don't have the Marigold Tarot, I definitely recommend it on itself as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching and blessings to all. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment and share it with someone who might benefit from it. And click the subscribe button for more future videos about tarot, divination, and other esoteric topics.